ladies and gentlemen welcome to the cardiac family channel and today we are going to discuss about what is emergency angioplasty also technically called as pami p a m i hey this is dr avinash namdar i am a cardiac surgeon in front of me you have dr sonali my daughter who is a interventional cardiologist and on my right you have my better half dr sanjeevni who is a cardiac intensivist cardiac anesthesiologist and also a uh, echo cardiologist so let's begin with this discussion it's going to be very interesting for all of you and you will get lot of tips so before we begin sonali uh, can you tell our viewers what exactly is emergency angioplasty also called as pami what you all cardiologists call yeah. it as pami okay right. so pami basically stands for primary angioplasty in myocardial infarction yes. and myocardial infarction is essentially someone who has a heart attack which is occurring because any blood vessel of the uh, of the heart is 100% occluded mm -hmm. if that happens there is a sudden acute shortage of blood supply to that portion of the heart muscle hmm. and it leads to sudden chest pain sweating and there are various manifestations sometimes there's jaw pain there's there's uh, sometimes back pain some atypical symptoms whatever the symptoms may be on the ecg there is a diagnosis of something known as st elevation myocardial infarction you mean certain changes certain in the changes, pattern of the yeah. cardiogram so the pattern is such so. that the st is that is a segment on the ecg is elevated okay, yeah. that is the highest priority which is given in the field of cardiology in which you have to rush the patient for emergency opening of that artery mm -hmm. and the first thing that you should always look for is to open that 100% occluded artery asap as soon as possible so ultimately you yeah. mean that is what is called as in simple terms yes. as heart attack that is Which heart technically attack. you yeah. you people call it as acute myocardial, myocardial infarction ami ami right. or mi right. yes. okay so someone gets severe chest pain which right. is suggestive ki right uh, this guy he's probably got a heart attack so right. what happens so how do you proceed what would you do so usually when there's chest pain they contact the patient usually contact some medical personnel right. so that is what we call first contact with a medical personnel first medical contact yes now when there is chest pain obviously the first thing that anybody any kind of emergency department or any clinic or any doctor should do is get an ecg yes. so the diagnosis of this acute heart attack has to be with an ecg and it should be quick it should happen within 10 minutes Yeah. once that is done mm. it depends where you where that patient has gone mm. to uh, like which hospital that patient has visited to to get this diagnosis mm. suppose the hospital that he or she has visited has cath lab faci facilities that is that is that is the place where we do emergency angioplasty mm. then it's very simple that the patient has to be shifted immediately as soon as so possible so what do you call it as a tertiary care center it's a tertiary, tertiary care, care center which and one more thing i would yeah. like to interrupt you said yeah. ecg yeah. now there are people who are, who ask me various questions like they have certain right. watch or certain yeah, yeah, methods yeah. by which they get a cardiogram is that adequate or do we need a proper yeah. 12 lead ecg done by a medical personnel we We What need a think? proper 12 lead ECG done by a medical personnel. Ah, okay. The Apple watches or the Fitbits or whatever those those the technological advances that we have, they are good for detecting arrhythmias. That is irregular, irregular. heart or rate or maybe the rate of the heart. The rate, basically and, and the rate. And a bit of a rhythm. Yes, yes, but it is not going to tell you about all the leads. in the heart that is it's like the heart is looked at by various cameras mm -hmm. and we need at least 12 cameras that is 12 lead that is why we call it the 12 lead ecg to understand the heart through its various directions so in short that that particular yeah. methodology is inadequate to diagnose it's a heart inadequate. attack right? remember we had missed yes. the so diagnosis can yeah. i just yeah. Uh, yeah. add something that yes. uh, this uh, electrocardiogram yes which we are going to uh, ask the people to take as soon as possible right, right. Uh, isn't it a electrical activity of the heart yes huh? it so is and that uh, it's like a galvanometer of the heart and hmm. then by knowing it's a peculiar uh, type of uh, electrical activity which is seen normally hmm. and abnormally in heart attack in heart attack right. so that is why it is so important to diagnose it through uh, electrical activity by 
कार्डियोग्राम यस ऑफ द मसल ऑफ द पंप व्हिच इज सिंगुलर सॉलिटरी मेंटेनिंग योर लाइफ ओके नाउ देयर आर सिचुएशंस लाइक पीपल हैव चेस्ट पेन सीवियर चेस्ट पेन यू टेक अ कार्डियोग्राम इट्स परफेक्टली नॉर्मल कार्डियोग्राम मींस ईसीजी मींस ईसीजी यस ईसीजी एंड इट इज परफेक्टली नॉर्मल हाउ डू यू अप्रोच इट Do you think you, you can you just delete? Uh, I mean, forget the concept of having a heart attack. No, no, no. Because we do have certain other varieties of heart attacks in which uh, sometimes those ECG changes are not picked up at that time. But that mm-hmm. does not mean mm-hmm. that ongoing changes are not happening inside the arteries. Mm-hmm. There can be dynamic changes on an electrocardiogram, which sometimes get picked up when you do serial ECGs. Right. You do serial troponins, that is cardiac so, enzyme levels. Right. But these are different types of heart attack. They are known as non- non st elevation heart uh, yes. st so elevation there could bio- be an heart attack yeah, yeah. with a normal pattern of cardiogram right yes. yes can i just yes. interrupt because uh, many patients you know uh, when they enter our clinic and we uh, ask them to take out uh, cardiogram yeah. they usually say we always already have done ma'am correct so correct. Uh, i i usually explain them yeah. what uh, yeah. dr sonal yeah. has explained yeah. that one yeah. cardiogram done right. doesn't mean that it is the same situation of right. the heart yeah. exactly. because yeah. heart is changing yeah. it's a dynamic no, no, talking uh, about acute condition. situation right. right like in the clinic it's a little different yeah. like it's a chronic chest pain or mm. angina on exertion but here mm. there is severe chest There's pain an emergency, it's right. an emergency it's an emergency you take an echocardiogram you see certain changes in the pa- pattern yeah. which are very very suggestive of heart attack you take him to the hospital now right. you have two options one is a tertiary care center or else just a hospital with a small icu but no cath lab facility right. so, so how do you approach so this? in those cases if that uh, suppose it's a small hospital with with no cath lab facility if it is close by to another hospital yes. within 120 minutes so within yeah. a couple of hours if you are able to shift the patient to another hospital with cath lab facility then it would be prudent for that doctor mm. at that clinic to refer that patient immediately yes. because yeah. the gold standard treatment is to open it up in the cath lab that would be our first priority if however it would take more than a couple of hours for the patient to be shifted especially in in yeah. in times of our current traffic situation which is going crazy traffic or maybe it has happened in a periphery or, or you're going on a trekking or somewhere right, and it's far right, away right. and things like so that so then you cannot afford to waste 3 4 5 6 hours in uh, you know uh, transporting the patient to a tertiary care center so what you can do before that is admit the patient at that clinic itself and give a thrombolytic agent that is an injection to try and dis- dissolve the clot that yes. is causing clot that dissolving clot, medication clot dissolving because yes. usually these heart attacks these st elevation heart attacks are caused by a clot which is formed at the uh, region of the block and it suddenly cuts off the blood supply to the heart okay. and as a result if with that medication at least some flow in that artery will be established and after that that patient can be shifted to a tertiary center a higher center where again even if the patient is not having chest pain you should still do an angiography and see demonstrate for yourself if the artery is yeah. actually opened even if it is opened it might still have some block which may require stenting so in short the so, thrombolytic therapy is just buying a little time, time yes. for doing your final angioplasty Absolutely. which is actually an emergency angioplasty yes. it's not a elective or a planned it's not angioplasty. a planned or a stage, so what, yeah. what exactly is pami so what is what we, we have heard pami word very often so many viewers <laughs> ask me yes. what is pami so that's mm. what so pami is primary angioplasty in myocardial infarction that an is emergency angioplasty angioplasty during heart, heart attack, attack. and words. in yeah. in that scenario you cannot waste time you have yeah. to rush the patient Uh, uh time is of essence you have Why? to save the muscle Why? Why? so uh, so if the artery remains 100% blocked for a long time then the muscle long means how much it can be as anything more than six a couple hours. of hours i, I if, believe 6 hours six is hours the viable say as an arbitrary viability of yes, the heart probably. muscle but right. to be even stricter a couple of hours would be perfect like yeah. we we've seen that patient's heart muscle is pristine it is saved if a patient reaches the hospital and goes in the cath lab within a couple of hours of mm-hmm. having his or her chest pain right. so uh, why we are doing this is to save the muscle right. because if the muscle does not get uh, blood supply uh, because that artery is 100% blocked for a long long time for hours and hours together that muscle is going to necrose it will mm-hmm. become a scar tissue it will not contribute to the contraction so there could be permanent damage so there will be to permanent the muscle damage of the to the muscle heart. and the f- 
ejection fraction that is that contraction is will go down mm -hmm. patient is at risk of heart failure and overall a low mortality in the future uh, a, a high mortality in the future yeah. Right. yeah right can now can the I, point can point i say is something on yeah. yeah. so in short yeah. uh, i would like to uh, stress upon the viewers that please please remember pami right uh, as you um, correlate Piku for constipation, <laughs> okay, pa for progeria, oh so God. pami for emergency angioplasty. Yeah. So the, it's that's a, a, it's a, a you know, sort of uh, yeah. easy thing to yeah. make you memorize. So yeah. you, there's, there's you no should movie, come. There's Sorry? no movie on pami. No? There is still <laughs> no, no, no movie. We have made a movie either. on progeria, but no yeah. movie on a pami. Okay, my question is yeah. uh, the common question for the viewers is well, the patient is taken to the hospital, then. Do you only rely on the cardiogram changes or do you have some other investigations to prove your diagnosis like for example any blood test or like any echocardiography yeah, can so, you just so dilate on that for for ST elevation MI it is based on ECG definitely okay, okay. but you do need the help of other investigative modalities quickly yeah. so uh, cardiac enzymes is one thing it tells us already if damage to the muscle has already set in, set in okay. then importantly is the echo Wha because what do you find yeah, in echo like that, that a patient uh, has come in the ICU and you are called over to and, do and the patient echo has yes. of course echo is very important and initially it tells you about the uh, different uh, abnormalities of the wall motion Correct. of yeah. the uh, muscles of the heart so mm. your diagnosis is also confirmed that you proceed to cath lab for uh, further in investigation mm. Mm. or angiography yes. another mm. important thing is how si good is the contractility of the heart mm. yes. so yes. by that you mean that how uh, how much is the risk involved in this procedure yeah. yes. while doing okay. the angioplasty while doing yeah. angioplasty yeah. whether any so, blood pressure medication uh, like medications to increase the blood pressure would be required exactly any whether supports? any medical support to yeah. the heart heart's action is yes. required hmm. another important thing is is there any leakage in the mitral valve which is the valve yeah. on the yeah. left side yeah. of the heart yeah. uh, cause due to heart attack right yeah. due to decreased blood due supply to, de to the uh, due to the contraction contraction abnormality, contraction right. abnormality right. and right. Ana, uh, still going further uh, one can say that if there is any rupture of the septum yes, yes. that is septum is the wall between two ventricle left and right side yeah, of the heart yeah. Yeah. if there is any rupture, rupture uh, because if rupture is there the, the whole, uh, whole prognosis, prognosis is, is very yes. different yeah. and yeah, VSR. is very yeah. uh, very, very risky critical. very very cr critical yeah, yeah. Yeah. and another important uh, again is whether there is yes, any fluid around the uh, pericardial fluid yeah. plural fluid yeah. things like any that. complications so having to done, having echo has been done, yeah. enzymes have been elevated, ECG is showing classical changes of heart attack, so you take the patient into the cat, cat lab, lab. Right. right, as yeah. early as possible. As right. early as possible. How do you proceed? So we proceed is, we, we do a basic angiogram first and yeah. the angiogram is done either via the hand or through the leg, the artery is injected mm -hmm. and a catheter is inserted through a tube which is kept inside the artery. This tube mm -hmm. is a very small tube, mm -hmm. uh, around 2 millimeter in diameter and that is the entry portal yeah. inside our vascular system. So then a small catheter which is even less than 2 millimeter in diameter reaches up to the arteries of uh, which supply the heart up, up to the coronary arteries. You are in the aorta and then the you are aorta, cannulating the into the uh, coronary yeah, arteries. So you cannulate yeah. in the left and the right, right and yeah. we get to know the anatomy first. first of all, so right. what is the what is going on basically yes, we yes. come to know and and sometimes we, we, may, we may come up with very uh, different types of scen scenarios. Scenario. Uh, sometimes so only what are the various possibilities right. that you see so we so we have a uh, left-sided heart attack right-sided heart attack what that means is it depends on which artery is occluded sometimes we just get maybe one, artery, one artery two, two arteries or all the three, or, all the three can be uh, maybe having block exactly so what how do you decide what to do so what we have to see is at that critical juncture which is the culprit artery hmm. which is causing a hundred percent block or which is causing less flow to the muscle at that, that point, point okay. that has to be tackled first because it's a critical situation that has caused the patient to you know come to the hospital in such an emergency hmm. uh, way hmm. so first you open that artery and it is opened simply by passing a wire and uh, taking a balloon opening up the block and then uh, implanting a stent depending on the size of the block 
once that is done and if the patient has any other block in some other artery no just a minute before yeah. that before you do a stent yes if you find it is a thrombotic occlusion right so what, would you just leave it like that you want to so, do so there are suction? many yes yeah. so there are many options and there's a little uh, so there are a lot of medications first which yeah. can be given inside the artery uh, we come to know whether the patient has thrombus in, in in his or her artery or not based on the angiogram we look at the flow of the contrast agent right, right. which 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 is flowing through the artery so we would try different types of medications which would uh, you know dissolve the clot further which is given inside the artery we would give different uh, medicines which dilate the artery which dilate the microcirculation also which is the invisible part of the arteries which is which are very tiny in millimeter they are not seen directly on an yes. angiogram so that the forward flow the overall circulation through the minor capillary small capillaries arterioles everything is improved if despite doing that if you know the uh, uh, clot is not dissolved or the clot burden is very high then we mm -hmm. might resort to something known as thrombosuction mm -hmm. it is literally you suck out the, suck thrombus. Out the thrombus it's yes. done it's done only if the burden is deemed to be really high mm -hmm. uh, usually if uh, it, it it all depends at what time the patient has arrived to the hospital if it's a very early presentation the clot is quite soft so mm. it is easier to suction mm. the later the patient comes then it becomes a quite thick clot it may not even get suctioned through the syringe so mm. it all depends on the characteristics can of the I, clot can I, yeah, isn't sure. it uh, it like a Plumbing. It is plumbing. Uh, plumbing yeah, job. Yeah. Uh, though yeah. uh, done on a very vital organ. It's done on a uh, organ but, uh, which is beating continuously. But certainly it is. Uh, yeah. I, I, I feel it. This is a very good simile that you yeah. have to suck it uh, yes, yes. from the artery. Right. Mm -hmm. And another important thing is nowadays beautiful drugs are available, yes. isn't yes. it? Yes. So like in short, all yeah. the medications that yeah. you do, angioplasty you do, you increase the blood supply of that yes. myocardium. Yes. We want and to preserve save the heart muscle. And preserve the contractility right. of the heart muscle. Right, right. right, right. I know it is really a really rewarding, it is rewarding. Uh, uh, procedure. Right. Uh, I mean, I would say surgery now because it is like a surgery. <laughs> it is like a and surgery. And uh, I remember uh, 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 two weeks back, there was a patient who walked into our clinic yes. with some weight chest pain. Yeah. He was just ignoring it. Well, just a little bit. I think it acidity. is acidity. <laughs> you got a cardiogram done, yeah. showed a ST elevation. Yes. You said he needs an emergency. Bami. He came on a motorbike yes. and you put him into your car. Yeah. You shifted him to a corporate yeah. hospital yes. and within one hour you did an angioplasty. Yes. And that was Save. required. And yeah. you saved his heart muscle. That was and important. usually that patients extra. only yeah. say, it, no doctor, it's not a heart attack, mm -hmm. it's just a, some minor uh, stomach trouble. So, so, so that is you know, no denial a, again, like you know, um, uh, yes, it, it yes. is understandable so, of course, but people, people don't, want, want, to, don't uh, want to face the reality of life. But, but it's but always to be yes. better, better to be safe than sorry, especially yeah. when it comes to an emergency yeah. situation like this. So. Do you think nowadays, with the present scenario with so much of uh, viral burden around right, the course. incidence of thrombotic obstructions yes. and the uh, overall incidence of coronary artery disease or certain acute myocardial yeah, infarctions have really gone up tremendously. That yeah. means it's an you exponential meant to say post COVID. Yes, yes post, -COVID, post COVID. Yes, okay. post COVID, especially COVID, in the last one yeah, or two years. We have had yeah. patients who've you know gotten stented in the past, or even those who've undergone valve yeah. replacements yeah, that, have been operated by. Story. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah but generally, hypercoagulability. Basically, it just means that the patient's blood post COVID has become more uh, thick, more uh, thick, coagu thick, coagu thick, coagulable thick. and thick, and uh, that is. Uh, a new battle that we have to fight especially we've had one patient who got covid two three times and his blood became so thick it took so many runs of thrombosuction to you know suck yeah, out yeah, all the yeah, clot yeah. it was a huge clot burden mm -hmm. so yeah there are challenges and every pandemic every new infection it it makes it all the more complex mm -hmm. so, so what is the outcome like you yeah. do a uh, palmy uh, what are the benefits does Benefits, it really help course, the patient on the long run? It is life saving. It yeah. is literally life saving. It is so, muscle so saving. So, would you say their one year survival time or the incidence of mortality really goes the down? The incidence of mortality definitely goes down. Yeah, it's yeah. a question of life and death, literally. Yeah, yeah. And it saves the heart muscle. The overall uh, quality of life of the patient in improves, Increases, especially yeah. if the patient comes early it's, for a palm. It's so difficult for yeah. people to accept this fact. Right. You see? And then people go around saying that doctors, well, you go with a chest pain, and they they'll put you into an ICU, yeah, they yeah. will just take you to a cath lab and do an angioplasty, do thing, yeah, things like that, yeah. and then, you know, you get a bad name. But yeah. I, 
uh, I think it is only because of ignorance. Yes, I mean, they, they, they may, the story comes out that, uh, oh, he was just forced to go in the cat lab and they yes, just yes. forced up angioplasty. It's not like it's that. Not if it's like warranted, that. it is required, yes, then, yes. then it is life-saving. We course. really Absolute need life. some uh, actor like Aishman Khurana oh God. to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, to make a movie on Make a movie, movie, come inside the cat lab, watch everything. No, and I think then he is starring in some <laughs> medical related yeah. movie. Yeah. But, but, but it is nothing to it do is, with it is, He is describing, I mean, he is a gynecologist. Ah, it's, yeah. gyne it's a different issue. Right. Okay, yeah. now, uh, the patient has come with multiple blocks. Right. And you have only tackled the culprit, culprit artery. artery yes. And you have left the two arteries as it is. Yes. What do you know about that? No, no, no. You Tomorrow have to he can get a heart attack later. Mm, yes. Yeah, but so you have to so tackle with the tackle them, but at a later stage. And what we mean by later stages, depending on the condition of the patient, because when patients come for emergency angioplasty, they don't come just walking in. Yes. Right? So they are sick. They, are, they may have pulmonary edema, that is fluid in the lung, if their mm. heart functioning is down, if they have especially come in a very later stage or if they have a very massive heart attack. Yeah, yeah. So they cannot so bear not the burden, they are not stable, hemodynamically. Hemodynamics, that is blood, yeah. pulse, blood pressure wise, they, yes. they may not be stable. So generally the dictum is that you treat the culprit artery first and then you deal with the rest of the blocks at a later, later stage, stage when they yeah. have otherwise settled. They don't need any other supports and blood pressure is fine. Then that can be done usually before the discharge in the same admission or at a later so, time. So that's what you call as staged, staged angioplasty. angioplasty isn't yes, it? that yes, is called yes, staged yes. angioplasty. Right. And as, as also I, I, I understand that you need a lot of radio opaque dye or what you yeah. call as contrast, contrast material. Agent, yes. So you don't want to load the patient with that because exactly. there could be renal problem, the person could be diabetic with right. renal uh, diabetic nephropathy yes. and things like that. Yeah, and when that. a patient comes in an emergency situ situation, you don't know what is the yeah, uh, kidney yeah. status, you don't know the other status. Right. At that point, you are just focused on opening the artery. So if you try to be too perfect in opening everything in the first go, so it basic, may be counterproductive. Yeah, a life-saving so, measure, yes, isn't yes. it? Yes, that uh, was a wonderful yeah. uh, discussion, I must say. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, understand that emergency angioplasty, also called as PAMI, that is primary angioplasty in myocardial infarction, is a life-saving procedure, a life-saving surgical operation, which has to be done as an emergency. So, when these doctors are available, like firefighters, you know, yeah. they can come, they come anytime, yeah. as soon as the patient is admitted, the doctors are there, taken to the cat lab, and the muscle is saved. So, saving the muscle of the heart is the most important fact, and that is why this is also called as tertiary prevention of myocardial infarction, or tertiary prevention of the world's number one killer disease that causes heart attack and death. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will be dealing with what is called as elective or planned angioplasty in the next video. So keep watching and if you like the video, just share it and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and have a very, very happy weekend. Bye-bye.